Did you know that Christians don't actually believe that we're all children of God? Now, this may be really shocking to you because a lot of people just assume that everyone is a child of God, but that's not actually what Christians believe. God himself told us in no uncertain terms that none of us are inherently children of God. In this video, I'm going to explain where the Bible teaches this, how we can become children of God, and why this profound difference between Mormons and Christians is so significant. First, what about verses in the Bible that indicate we're all children of God? To kind of lay the groundwork for understanding those verses, I want to consider these three other verses in the New Testament. In the book of Acts, the apostle Paul calls a false prophet a son of the devil. The book of 1 John tells us that it is evident who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Jesus even proclaimed something very similar to the religious leaders of his day. He said, why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's will. The Bible uses shocking language like this, language that says that some people are actually children of the devil. Now, why do I bring these verses up? Just because the Bible uses the language of fatherhood or sonship doesn't necessarily refer to a literal begetting of a spirit child. Jesus wasn't trying to indicate that the Pharisees were literally begotten spirit children of the devil when he says you're of your father, the devil. And with that in mind, let's turn our attention to two verses that Latter-day Saints use as proof to indicate that we're all children of God. First, Hebrews 12. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? Hebrews 12 compares the discipline of our earthly fathers to the discipline of our heavenly father. He speaks to Christians in recognition that God is the father of our spirits, kind of like how Steve Jobs fathered the iPhone, God fathered our spirits. The second verse is in Acts 17. As even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. In this text, Paul is quoting a pagan poet to prove that idolatry is absurd even within a pagan framework. Now, there is a sense in which we are the offspring of God. We are his creation. We're made in his image. He fathered us like we looked at in the previous verse. But it's important to know that this usage of God's offspring is the only time in the entire New Testament the Bible refers to all of humanity as the offspring of God. He's simply using the term offspring because the Athenians were familiar with this poet and he could more readily make his point. Now, if you're watching this, you might be saying, well, you're just making those verses say what you want. That's not what those verses say. And I would agree with you if those were the only verses in the New Testament that talked about the subject. But what we have are tons of verses that actually say we are not God's children and we need to become his children by adoption. And so when we look at the entirety of scripture, what we find when we synthesize all those texts is that those verses are speaking poetically. Let me explain a little bit more of what I mean. Consider these super clear verses from the book of John. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Notice the critical word in this text, become. You cannot become something that you already are. For example, I can't become human. I'm already human. I can't become a child of my father. I'm already his child. The word become here indicates that we are not inherently children of God but that we may become children of God by faith. Indeed, followers of God are said to have been adopted as sons. Galatians 4 says this, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. Ephesians 1.5 says, In love, God predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. So then, if I'm an adopted son of God, I wasn't born as God's spirit child. And how are we to receive this adoption? It's not for everyone. It's for those who have faith. Galatians 3 says, For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. It is through faith that we are sons of God, not through spiritual begetting in a pre-mortal life. Romans 8, which is often quoted by Latter-day Saints, proves the same point. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. 
For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. If we are to be co-heirs with Christ, it is because we have been adopted as sons, and thus we receive an inheritance. The same inheritance that Christ receives in his humanity. An inheritance of a perfected, resurrected body and a gloriously redeemed earth and of eternal life. So why does all of this matter? Well, because this idea of us being children of God is absolutely foundational for the Mormon idea of exaltation. If we are not begotten children of God, but instead adopted children of God, well, that removes all grounds for future exaltation. Because how can we be like God if we're not his species? Consider this, if God did not physically beget us in a pre-mortal life, then the scripture's teaching about God's uniqueness makes a lot of sense. There really is no one like God, including us. So many Latter-day Saints use the example of human children when talking about this issue of exaltation. Don't you want your son to be just like you? Well, of course I do. I want him to be better than me, but my son is the same species as me. We're not expecting my guinea pig to become like me. This doctrine of adoption is important because a lot of Latter-day Saints object to the idea of hell on the basis that God wouldn't do that to his children. So many people think, how could God be so cruel as to punish his children for all eternity? If God is our father, then surely he has an obligation towards us. But if he is not our father, then that obligation does not exist. But hear this, not one of God's children will be in hell for all of eternity. I leave you then with the words of the Holy Spirit from John 1:12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Mm -hmm.